Hi everyone. Today we're going to be talking about intervals of increase, decrease, and constant intervals of linear functions. All right, at this time, please make sure that you've got your math binder and your pencil. I think those are the only things that you're going to need today, but you can go ahead and open up to the F page of your critical concepts section of your binder. All of the things that we're going to be talking about today are dealing with functions, so we're going to the F page for functions. Please copy down both the definition of increasing function and interval of increase. Please pause the video while you jot down these notes. Press resume as soon as you're finished. Okay, now that you've jotted down these two definitions, please make sure that you note, and you may want to include these in your notes as well, that if your function is increasing, that means that as the x values increase, the graph will rise when we're looking at it from left to right. Okay, so in other words, it's going to be moving in an upward fashion. You will also always have a positive rate of change or slope during this, in this portion of the graph. All right, two more definitions for us. Please pause your video and jot down your definition of decreasing function and interval of decrease. Resume your video as soon as these definitions are complete. Now, you may also want to jot down. This means that as our x values decrease, the graph will fall, or in other words, the graph will be going in a downward fashion when we're looking at it from left to right. Okay? A decreasing function from left to right will move in a downward fashion. This means we will have a negative rate of change or a negative slope for this portion of the graph. Okay, our last two definitions, constant and constant interval. Please pause your video at this time to jot down those definitions. Resume your video once they've been completed. Now, with a constant, this means that as the x value increases, so as we are moving across our graph, the graph will not rise or fall. We call that remaining constant. The graph will go straight across in a horizontal pattern. This, remember that with horizontal lines, our rate of change or slope is zero when we have a horizontal line. So for that portion of the graph, our rate of change is zero. Okay, at this time, we're going to do a couple of examples that are included on the handout. They should be on the back of your note guide. Uh, for the graph, identify any intervals of increase, intervals of decrease, or constant intervals. Be sure to list the values of the independent variables for each interval. So, let's start with interval of increase. In this graph, there are no intervals of increase. The graph is not rising at any portion of the graph. So we will say none. Now, intervals of decrease. This graph is moving in a downward fashion, so we do have an interval of, of decrease. Okay, we can list this two different ways. One way that we can um, list the interval of decrease is to say, um, that we are decreasing when x is between zero and six hundred. Okay, because we can see that here, between here and here, this is where our graph is decreasing. Okay, another way of saying that same thing is that we could write a uh, compound inequality. This is decreasing when x is greater than 0 but less than 600. Okay, and constant interval. There are no parts of this graph that, um, that are remaining constant, so again we'll say none. All right, let's take a look at our next example. Okay, um, interval of increase is the first thing they're asking us to find. 
And that's going to happen right here. This is where my graph is going up. So my interval of increase is when x is between 11 and 16. Okay, the other way I can state that is as a compound inequality. I can say that when x is greater than 11 and less than 16. All right, interval of decrease. I can see that's happening right here. And I can say that is happening when x is between 0 and 8. If I'm going to write that as a compound inequality, that would look like 0 is less than x, which also means x is greater than 0 and x is less than 8. Okay, lastly, we are looking for a constant interval, and that is happening right here. Okay, I can say that's happening when x is between 8 and 11, or written as a compound inequality, that would look like 8 is less than x, is less than 11. Your teachers will accept either the x is between statement or the compound inequality statement. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this last one you're going to complete on your own. Please use your completed examples as your guide. When you have finished this checkpoint question, please bring your binder so you can, your teacher can verify that all of your terms have been written in the critical concepts page and the note guide sheet that you were able to um, complete the examples and checkpoint question on. Good luck.